Welcome everyone to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and in this video I will be finishing up some of the patch 5.6 data mine information that I haven't already talked about. I should have by this time uploaded two videos, one of them is talking about the new Corporal Flashpoint and its storyline so if you want to check that out that should be uploaded. The second one is talking about upcoming cartel market items. Uh, this third video is going to be just a compilation of some of the other stuff that couldn't quite fit into those videos. And so let's get right into it. Once again, this is all data mine information. It's all subject to change, but this is kind of just uh, what they've been testing on the PTS server. So let's go, go ahead firstly into some of the new augments. So obviously we'll be getting a new augment series. This is something they announced quite a while ago. Uh, the artifact rating augment, this is rated 230. It's going to give us 67 endurance, 19 power, and 97 of your tertiary stat. That could be, you know, power, crit rating, or whatever else. And then the legendary version, which is item rating 236, this is going to be giving us 76 endurance, 33 power, and your 98 of your tertiary stat. So it's a significant improvement. It's definitely going to be a, a requirement if you want to perform, you know, the best in PvE and PvP. Uh, once again, this is going to be available through two ways. One way is by doing the flashpoint, doing it in harder modes gives you access to the better augments. Uh, the other way is you can craft it and then buy and sell it off the GTN. It's probably going to be pretty expensive to outfit your entire character in augments because people, uh, it's, it's going to cost a lot to craft and people are going to be wanting high prices for it. Uh, so those are the new augments. We also have a new cartel market item, which is going to be a boost to level 70. Right now, the only boost we have is to level 60 and level 65, I believe. But the thing about that boost is it kind of doesn't allow you to repeat old content. So it gives you the disclaimer that if you use the boost, you can only do the Kotfi and Kotet storylines and then go on from there. That what's different about this cartel market item is it allows you to boost to level 70. You have access to all of the abilities, but you can actually complete all of the old story content. So you you could literally complete your class story starting from level 1 all the way to 70 while a level 70 character having all of your abilities. That's really cool because it allows you to obviously uh, have an alt at level 70 which you could use for PvE or PvP but at the same time you're not losing out on playing a class story. And it's going to be a pretty cool experience I think especially for some new player who wants to be OP just from the start. Also, you can probably expect it to be pretty expensive considering it's offering this uh, pretty cool service. I won't be, uh, either way, I bet you a, a lot of the community is not going to be happy with the price. It does seem to be that it's also coming in a bundle. The Master Data Grand bundle gives you Eternal Commander equipment, which seems to be tier one level 70 gear. It also gives you access to your personal droid companion and your starship. Uh, one of the major problems with the boost we have right now is you can boost up to level 65 or 70 but you don't have access to your starship so you can't travel the world you can, you're stuck basically on on where you can get to from your uh, strongholds and stuff which is a huge pain in the ass so this is basically giving you access to your to your droid companion and your starship now one thing to know is this does seem to be bound to legacy so it doesn't look like this is something that you can sell on the gtn for credits it does seem as though this is only for your legacy for yourself so if you're gonna want this you're going to have to pay tell coins for it you won't be able to pay your credits for it which once again it's not something I like I think it should totally be sold on the GTN because uh, it's probably gonna be pretty expensive in terms of cartel coins now another thing to talk about here is some changes to crafting now because I don't craft and also we don't have very much information this is a little bit confusing to me so I won't be able to explain it the best but basically what they're introducing is something called primary and secondary traits now traits are a new feature, they kind of extend on the whole crafting experience and so what it does seem to do is it gives you uh, benefits to crafting with certain companions and stuff. So you have primary and secondary traits. Primary traits, uh, for example, the ones we have here is a combatant is proficient in combat missions, an underworld trader is proficient in underworld trading missions, scavenger is proficient in scavenging missions, a technician is pro proficient in engineering missions. Now once again, I cannot confirm this, this is my own speculation, but what I believe this is saying is depending on what who or what your companion is and what their skill set is, they're going to be proficient at different missions. Because right now, uh, the companion's proficiency only depends upon their influence level. But obviously someone like, for example, Kaleo, she would be considered an underworld trader. So she's probably going to be better at underworld trading missions than say someone else. Now we have a version of that in game like for example I you know I don't remember if they took this out or not but obviously like some companions had more crit rating for certain uh, 
missions and others so they already had a version of this this does seem to be kind of improvement on that so companions for example are going to be given primary traits which is going to make them more efficient at certain things and it does seem to be more broader it won't be like a crit rating they'll just be more proficient at it maybe they'll have a better crit rating and they'll finish it quicker and they'll do other stuff uh, then we have secondary traits. So for example, we have four uh, secondary traits here. Firstly, cold-blooded. Now this is effective for missions in a frozen environment like Ilum, Hoth, Alderaan, Belsavis, Zyost. And it increases your credit gain by 30%, reduces your mission cost by 10%. I'll just name out the other ones here and then we'll talk about it in a second. So the second one we have here is Jedi Slayer. Now this is effective for missions that have Jedi as your enemies. It increases CXP gain by 200 upon mission success and it increases the companion's power by 15%. The third one we have here is Droid Buddy. Effective when you're going on a mission with a droid companion. It increases XP gain by 15% upon mission success and is guaranteed a loot package of crafting material. The final one we have here is leadership. It's effective for combat missions and increases the companion's power by 20%, reduces mission duration by 15%, and increases the influence gain by 100 of all companions on the mission upon success. Once again, I read this over 10 times over, I have no clue what the hell they're talking about. And the reason that's the case is because it does seem as though they're going to be making some very significant changes to the way crafting and sending companions on mission works. We're probably going to be getting new perks. As you guys saw there, it does seem as though we're going to be getting CXP credits more crafting materials and a whole bunch of other stuff. Basically, it seems as though they're trying to revitalize crafting, make it more profitable and try to get more people to do it. So the message to take from that is crafting might get a lot more fun and a lot more profitable. And uh, we don't know exactly how that's going to happen. Expect just more information in the future. We can probably expect a big forum post from Musco and stuff uh, talking about the details of what exactly is going on. But this is just kind of data mined right now. What we also want to make note is in the last one, leadership, it said it increases the influence gained by 100 of all companions on the mission upon success, which shows as though we can probably send numerous missions now on uh, uh, numerous companions on a certain mission. And uh, also we're going to want to take note of where the mission is taking place, which location, which planet, what kind of enemies they're fighting. There's going to be a lot more kind of thought going into that. And that's going to determine how much profit we get from it, how much success we have and other stuff. So that actually is pretty exciting. If they make some really significant changes, I would actually be very interested in returning to crafting because it might be very fun. Also, they're making some very big changes to Group Finder. So they're revamping it and we saw this in the roadmap as well. They mentioned that they're going to be doing some major changes uh, come next year. And two of the changes that they've, uh, uh, that's been hinted at at the data mine information is firstly, we're going to be getting an indicator on which role is missing in queue. So basically, if you're queued as a DPS, a role's taking a lot of time, you can quickly check this indicator. Oh, it's a lot of groups are missing a healer. You can respect to heals and go and get in a group really quickly. So that's going to be the function of that. The second one we're getting is a repeatable reward. So this is something you can repeat daily because right now all we have are dailies and weeklies. So now what we're going to be getting is a reward that we can keep getting uh, throughout the day. Uh, I'm not sure what the reward gives, whether it will give you, you know, unassembled components, command tokens or CXP or whatever. So more information on that later, but those are some new group finder changes we're getting. Another feature we're getting uh, just in terms of groups in general is the suggested invite. So now when uh, an ops leader wants the members to invite people, you don't have to promote everyone to ops lieutenant. Uh, you can just suggest an invite to your leader and then your leader can accept or reject that. So it's just kind of a quality of life change. Another quality of life change is that the pack opening experience can now be disabled. So, so for those of you guys who are kind of... Um, Annoyed at the new experience, didn't like how slow it was and stuff, you can now disable it uh, in your preferences and open packs a lot quicker. We're also going to be getting a new promotion. This is called the Rule the Galaxy Story Pack. And this Rule the Galaxy Story Pack will give us a Chist Talon Interceptor mount. It will give us um, the new Force Veterans armor set. And it will also give a 5 pack major experience boost. So um, I'm not sure how much that is going to cost or where it's going to be available. It might be available in game. It might, it's probably going to be like Amazon or something like that. Maybe Twitch. I'm not sure. But whether that's even remotely worth it will depend upon how nice the mount is and the armor set, which I'm guessing are not going to be very nice from Bioware's uh, promotions. Usually they just reskin something and put it there. So 
Nothing too big there. And then finally, we have a new Cartel Market 2017 Life Day bundle. As always, we're going to be getting some new stuff. Uh, we're getting a Mary Ice Tromper mount, which does seem to be now not a beast mount, but rather a kind of machine mount. We're getting a Umba Life Day model Umbaran Train Stronghold decoration. Not sure what that looks like. We're getting a new Snowtacular Flare, which is going to be pretty cool. And then a Copro Jubilee Mini Pro Pet. So that's kind of cool, a new Life Day bundle. I'm excited for Life Day. I always love Life Day, so uh, that's going to be nice. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are excited for some of the new stuff coming with patch 5.6. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comment section about these new changes. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.